Hello guys and welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be making triaminoguanidinium nitrate. I want to give a huge thank you to all my Templars Dollar patrons for making all of the uh, expensive parts of my project possible. Because of you guys, I almost have enough money to buy a nice argon slash nitrogen tank so I can have inert gases, which will help me a lot in my projects. Anyways, let's get on with the video. So initially, I started out this project because uh, around a year ago, Explosions in Fire uploaded a video on C2N14. And in his video, he said that there was a paper that made it a different method using triaminoguanidinium chloride. However, at the time, I didn't know what that stuff was, and I was like, oh yeah, it sounds complex and unreachable by the amateur. However, uh, through thorough research, I have actually figured out that it was not impossible, and I decided to take on the endeavor of making it. So my first attempt at making this was by making the triaminoguanidinium chloride directly, and I was going to do this through a patent that I found, and it outlined a, a process where I used calcium cyanamide and hydrazine monochloride. Okay, so first things first, I have to remake my calcium cyanamide, because my last batch is completely hydrolyzed. As opposed to last time where I used the um, urea and calcium oxide method to make the uh, calcium cyanurate, I decided to this time use a different method, which I think was a lot easier because it doesn't release heaps of ammonia. In this method, I get to whip out my 3000 milliliter flat bottom flask and make a large solution of um, cyanuric acid. And then to this cyanuric acid solution, I added a solution of calcium chloride in a proper stoichiometric amount. And from that, a bunch of calcium cyanurate precipitated out, and all I had to do from there was filter it, dry it, and then take my dried calcium cyanurate and throw it in a fire for an hour or two at a very high temperature, which converted it, hopefully, to um, calcium cyanamide. To test that I actually had cyanamide, I did the silver test, and I came out with a very positive result, so that's good. We can move on. Next thing I need in this synthesis is something called hydrazine monochloride. So this has to be specifically the monochloride, not the dichloride. So uh, I actually got some hydrazine monochloride from a friend. Uh, he made some for me and I'm very thankful for it. Uh, his name was PBN3. You can go check him out on YouTube. He has a channel. Link in the description below. So anyways, now that I had both of these precursors, I tried the reaction, but it completely failed. To be honest, I have no idea what went wrong, but I'm pretty sure it was the calcium cyanamide, because my calcium cyanamide seemed to be very, um, impure. So in the end, I just gave up on this idea, because it just wasn't gonna work. I didn't have pure enough calcium cyanamide, and I didn't really have a good way to titrate it properly, because I just don't have the, uh, equipment. After about a month or two of this project stagnating, I found a paper that called for using free base hydrazine and a guanidine salt. Now, I could have used guanidine chloride to make the, uh, the chloride salt directly from this. However, I ended up using guanidine nitrate because DBX Labs actually sent some to me for the synthesis, so thank you to him. This just means that I'd be making triamino guanidine nitrate instead of chloride, so I'd actually have to free base the nitrate and then turn that into a chloride, but that will be in my next video. So for this synthesis, I ended up doing one mole of guanidine nitrate to 4.5 moles of hydrazine. The hydrazine that I used was 40% aqueous uh, hydrazine hydrate. So in reality, it wasn't actually 40%, it was like 26%. As the synthesis went, I uh, accidentally broke my pot plate midway through, or it just broke by itself. So I ended up having to transfer it into a boiling water bath over a stove, which means that it didn't actually have stirring over that period, so I hope that it didn't uh, lower the yield too much. Nonetheless, after the hour-long reaction, it was done, so I took it off heating, and I let it cool over a period of a few hours. In the end, there were some very nice crystals with a pinkish tinge to them. The pinkish tinge to these um, crystals was most likely different aminated versions of guanidine, such as diaminoguanidine and aminoguanidine. These were impurities that had to be removed, so when I filtered, I washed multiple times with both ethanol and water. This got all of the coloring out and ended up being a nice, very nice white precipitate. 
Now the question is, how do I know that I actually made the triamino guanidine? Because this is actually a very important synthesis because I'm gonna be using this triamino guanidine for multiple future things. So I need to be 100% sure that what I have is what I set out to get. So I actually have somebody to give a huge thank you to, and that would be Engager because uh, as you guys know, he was the one who wrote the uh, big tetrazole paper. He's actually been helping me out with this project because I had no idea if I actually had the triamino guanidine. However, he has been giving me lots of different tests and different properties of it that I could actually use to make sure that I have my triamino guanidine. So I'm gonna go through a few of these with you guys to show you how um, we came to the conclusion that it's, that it's most likely triamino guanidine. So the first obvious thing that I looked for was the solubility. Now, triamino guanidine, because it's uh, fairly special that it has a very, very low solubility in ethanol, nearly insoluble, and a also very low solubility in water. However, it has a very nice solubility curve where you can actually recrystallize it and get some very nice crystals without losing too much product. The fact that I was able to filter this white solid by getting all the color out by washing it with ethanol and water proves that I at least have something that is most likely uh, at least somewhat triamino guanidine. So this is obviously more of a suggestive than a conclusive test. So Engager um, found a paper on how I could actually test if I have the presence of triamino guanidine. This test was pretty simple and all I had to do was add acidified copper 2 chloride to acidified triamino guanidine uh, nitrate. You could also use triamino guanidine chloride, but I use nitrate because I don't have that much of the chloride and don't really want to waste it. And since I made the chloride from the nitrate, as long as the nitrate was pure, or at least had a positive sign, it means that the chloride also is the triamino guanidine chloride. The paper for this reaction is linked below, so if you want to try it out for yourself, it's in the description. Looking at the results of this test, we want to see a light green precipitate fall out of the solution. Because if we see blue, that means that we have a positive identity for diamino guanidine. But since we want triamino guanidine, we want this light green color. And if there were to be amino guanidine present, we would have an orangish yellow precipitate. So as a quick summary of the procedure, I had an acidified solution of triamino guanidine nitrate in hydrochloric acid. And then I added to that an acidified solution of copper 2 chloride. And once it was added, it created a very dark green uh, solution, but then a bunch of light green precipitate quickly fell out. I just filtered this stuff and let it dry. There is one more thing about this test, and that is if you use normal hydrazine salts, or just hydrazine itself, you will get uh, blue and green precipitates as well. So if there were hydrazine present, it would mess up the test. However, with the thorough ethanol and water watchings, it, uh, it ensured that there was no hydrazine left. So in conclusion, I think I can at least conclusively say that this non-recrystallized triamino guanidine mass is mostly triamino guanidine nitrate with some diamino guanidine uh, contamination. And to get rid of the diamino guanidine contamination, there is a very easy way, and that is just recrystallization of water because diamino guanidine solubility I think is like 30 times higher than triamino guanidines. So multiple recrystallizations should purify the triamino guanidine to sufficient purity. Thank you everybody so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and now that you guys know how I made my triamino guanidine, there are a uh, few more things I need to make and then I can start my next big project.